Echo Glen Children's Center is a state juvenile detention facility in Washington State under the umbrella of DSHS. I worked at Echo Glen Children's Center as a counselor between 2005 and 2012. In 2008, I filed a whistleblower complaint against Echo Glen for gross mismanagement because I felt that the Bible study and chapel services contained inappropriate content and because I felt that the management was unaware of the impact that this content had on the residents and employees. For example, kids were being told that they would go to hell if they were gay, that other people would go to hell if they were gay or if they were Catholic, that Satan wants to come and shoot you in the face, one resident was told that her anxiety attacks were caused by Satan trying to enter her body, and one Muslim resident was told that he worships a false god. I tried to raise my concerns with my coworkers and manager, and my manager told me to drop it and that I, quote, read too much. After filing my whistleblower complaint, I received a response. The response that I received from the whistleblower department acknowledges that I had raised concerns about the information residents were receiving through Bible study. It also states that the determination about my concern was, quote, outside the authority of the whistleblower program, and that they would not be opening a whistleblower investigation. Around the time that I received this response from the whistleblower program, I received a visit at work during a team meeting from an employee at Echo Glen named Greg Bolden. I knew Greg from work because he was known by me, my coworkers, and the residents as Chaplain Greg and he appeared to be in charge of most of the religious services that occurred at Echo Glen. When Chaplain Greg visited me at my work site, it was during a team meeting. During the conversation that ensued, I claimed, among other things, that it is not right to tell residents that they are going to hell because they are gay, that it was creating tension with the residents, and that it was personally offensive. Chaplain Greg responded that when Saul was on the road to Damascus, he encountered several people with tricky logical arguments and forked tongues people possessed by demons, and that their tricky logical arguments were nothing compared to the truth of the gospel of Jesus. It wasn't until quite some time later, unfortunately, that I learned about the Washington State Human Rights Commission. I wrote them on at least two occasions outlining several concerns, including my original concern about the content of Bible study and several of the Bible study volunteers, the statements Chaplain Greg Bolden had made to me, and other complications that had arisen in my work and in my relationships to co-workers due to my raising concerns about Bible study and Chaplain Gregg. I also learned that the Washington State Human Rights Commission is not allowed to take into consideration events that occurred more than six months before initial contact with them is made. That's too bad, because by the time I learned about the Washington State Human Rights Commission, more than six months had passed since my manager had told me that I read too much and Greg Bolden had insinuated that I was possessed by demons. Pay attention now because here is where my personal story intersects with a story run by Como News in 2011. One of the volunteers I, I was concerned about, the one who said Satan is coming to shoot you in the face, was Reverend Royce Shorter. In May of 2011, Como News ran a story about Echo Glen because, among other things, Echo Glen had a volunteer on campus who had a pedophilia record from 1985. That volunteer was Reverend Royce Shorter. A few months before the Como News story ran, all of the staff at Echo Glen received an email informing us that Chaplain Greg Bolden was being laid off due to budget cuts. I wish I would have saved that email, but I didn't. In 2012, I resigned from Echo Glen due to hostile work environment. Again, my relationships with co-workers and supervisors became strained due to the concerns that I had voiced about Bible study, Greg Bolden, and others. When I resigned from Echo Glen, I sought unemployment based on hostile work environment. I therefore was required to present my case for review. During the hearing that was given to determine whether I could establish a hostile work environment, the human resources manager for DSHS, Art Stratton, claimed that there was never any person by the name Greg Bolden that had worked for Echo Glen Children's Center. Here is the audio excerpt directly from that hearing, presided over by Keith Allred, Administrative Law Judge at the Tacoma Department of Administrative Hearings. I'm looking up in our computer system, and if I understand the correct spelling of Greg's name, B-O-L-D-E-N, correct? Uh, I guess so, yeah. I'm not sure. We do not have a Greg Bolden as an employee. 
Right. Did you ever have one? Uh, you did in the past. He would be, this is a database that names never go away. Here is Greg Bolden's Facebook page, clearly stating that he worked at Echo Glen Children's Center. Greg Bolden has recently updated his Facebook page, and lo and behold, he now works at Green Hill School, one of the other few juvenile detention facilities in Washington State. Could that be so? Well, here is his DSHS mailing address, apparently, on the DSHS website. It seems reasonable to assume that Greg Bolden, as the chaplain of Echo Glen Children's Center, was in charge of all of the religious services and religious service volunteers at Echo Glen. Not only does this make sense, but I personally witnessed him running most of the chapel services, and he stated that he was in charge of the Bible study volunteers. Therefore, it seems that he would have been the person responsible for having Roy Shorter on campus at Echo Glen. This error in record keeping is only one of the many, quote, errors that were made during my administrative hearing to establish a hostile work environment. 